apparently, apparently I'm professional. <laughs> Don't feel it. Basically, if I keep running with really speedy runners, <laughs> hopefully I'll get really fast. I'm Ruth and I can't swim. Hi, I'm Ruth and I like to party. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ruth and I'm originally an Essex girl. <laughs> no, I don't want that as my intro. <laughs> Hi, I'm Ruth and I'm a very natural blonde. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what else to say. Um, Hi, I'm Ruth and I'm a professional triathlete. That'll do. I've always got to get the coffee in. The most important part of training. <laughs> This is going to be the start of my pro triathlon career. Thought I'd give you guys a bit of an insight into the transition from age group to pro. I guess some of the challenges, where it's different, how life's changed, and I've come through. I've always been quite sporty. I mainly played hockey all throughout school and university. I was never actually very skillful. I managed to kind of blag my way into some better teams than I think I should have been in, just because I like to run quite a lot. That kind of gave me, I guess, that taste for being competitive and having kind of competitions and trying to get better. I'd probably reached about the limits of what I could do in terms of my skill level. <laughs> I was actually training for the Berlin Marathon at the time. And at work, someone sort of said, oh, we've got a spare place at the London Triathlon. Do you want to come and give it a go? And I'd started doing just like a little bit of cycling. So I've got cousins that are quite keen cyclists. Went and did this first triathlon, it's Olympic distance. Thought this could be something quite good to get into actually. So I signed up to my local tri club and it all kind of went from there. I heard people talking about Kona and even though at that point Ironman still seemed slightly ridiculous. Thought, you know, I'm definitely gonna have to give it a go at some point. Then 2017, did my first Ironman at Lanzarote. It was a bit of a disaster. Not the best first experience, but fortunately it's only gone up from there with Ironman. I was lucky enough that I managed to get a roll down Kona, space, uh, Kona place so sort of headed out to Kona that year and really just wanted to have a better Ironman than, than Lanzarote which it was. Then the aim has just been get faster, get better and try and win. There's been a number of big changes recently in my life. First of all, with work, I'm going down to one day a week. So I think the main shift is going to be from doing 60 hour weeks down to an eight hour week. There's things like travel, accommodation, race entry to pay for. Generally just living cost. I thought if I keep one day a week, it helps cover a bit of that. I, I was a bit worried that if I went straight into all my focus being on triathlon, that would take the fun away a little bit and make it a bit too pressured. The other thing then, a few people will have noticed the name change on social media. I'm actually currently separating from my husband, so that's also another big life change. Quite a few big changes going on. See how that all plays out. Generally speaking, there's lots of different opportunities for next year and we'll see what happens. world of being a pro triathlete. I don't think anyone's naive enough now to think oh I'm going to turn pro and then sponsors are going to ring me up and, and offer me stuff. That obviously doesn't happen. You even look at some of the top 10 at Kona and they're not really making any money. I actually probably could get a lot more sponsorship through being a top age grouper than from being what I'm now going to be which is a very average, well hopefully average, uh, slash better than average but hopefully to start with average uh, pro.
Probably the most important part of winter training for me is resting. It's really important to have a proper off-season. For me, I find having been doing it alongside an intense job, actually most of it has not necessarily been the physical recovery but more the mental recovery. I kind of really need that. It doesn't mean that I'm not doing anything. I've been out on some walks, done a bit of mountain biking. My mountain biking skills are non-existent. I've done like a little bit of running. I've been trying to do things that are fun. I generally have three to four weeks of no structure, trying to be very chilled out. I wanted to get back into swimming a little bit because I found before if I take too long off swimming, it really takes me a long time to get back into it. And given that I want to do a couple of early races next year, I was like, I can't really afford to do that. My coach, Will Clark, my coach, you may know him, he's a big dog Olympian. <laughs> That's not, I said he's a big dog. Yep. I was being deadly serious. <laughs> so I actually found him on, on the street, randomly picked him up. I was searching for a triathlon coach. He'd put out a tweet saying he was looking to start doing some coaching, he wanted some athletes, had a chat with him over the phone, it seemed like we got on quite well. He clearly has like lots of experience of different coaches and he's so responsive to be able to change stuff. As long as I give him a bit of notice of like, oh actually I'm not going to be able to do tonight's session, can you move it around or like readjust things. He's kept it really interesting. I think if I was trying to do my own training, I'd probably stick to like the same sets, day in, day out. and it would get very boring. For me, having a coach has probably been, like A, it's a thing that's like, allowed me to improve the most, but it's also from a kind of time management and efficiency point of view, like not having to think about training. I just have to look at my diary, be like, what have I got in today? And I just have to do it. So it makes life very easy. my tea mixing skills, thank you. Tell me off for my tea strength. And then it means it mixes itself as you pour it. Now we're getting into the deep stuff. What is my life goal? I think I've got some sort of short term goals and some longer term goals. In terms of next year, let's look at that. My main goal is I'd really like to qualify for Kona. It's gonna be really tough. I think the new qualifying system for pros makes it that bit harder. I think that's quite good, you know, I think I'd only want to go to Kona if I thought I could actually get in the top 10. Clearly I've got to make some pretty significant improvements to be able to get there with the kind of additional rest and recovery that I'm going to have now. I'm hoping that I'll see some quite good improvement. I'm also not naive enough to think that that's going to come overnight, like I know that's going to take time. It might take 12 months, it might take 2-3 years. And I'd quite like to just go and see some new places, doing some 7.3s, try and podium at some 7.3 distances and get a marathon PB would be my next, like as part of an Ironman. Basically if I keep running with really speedy runners, <laughs> hopefully I'll get really fast. I think longer term, it's like I'd like to get to a point where I guess triathlon can be more of my career in terms of I can actually make some money from it somehow. 